Russia might be trying to shore up its failing force generation efforts by getting combat power from an unlikely place. Afghan commandos. That's right, former U.S. trained Afghanistan elite special forces might just be going to work for Russia. I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It is November 1st, 2022. This is your daily Ukraine update, and we are going to be breaking it all down right now. First, as always, guys, I give you the tactical map update, and there's a couple of interesting notes. Uh, first off, that Russia does seem to have returned to the offensive, sort of. You can see they've made some advances. Here is Bilohorivka, and they've uh, taken some swamp. Uh, but there you can see that while normally I would caution against creating these sort of salient bubbles that they can oftentimes be very, very tactically disadvantageous, again, because it gives the, in this case, Ukrainian forces, three sides in which to attack these forces. Because they are flush against this river, they are somewhat protected from the side, meaning that this advance could actually potentially start to have real follow-on effects. Uh, but again, I wouldn't hold my breath since Russia has really been stuck in a stalemate in this region for some time. When we look to the south, there's also been some very minor changes. Uh, let's see if we can find it here. It, yeah, right here, south of uh, Pavlivka. You can see Russian forces have advanced a little bit and seized part of the town of uh, Pavlivka here. And again, it's not what's not clear, however, is that any of these advances are part of a larger strategy by Russia. Um, th these are disparate areas, probably, especially in the south here, I suspect sort of defended by TDF forces. Um, you know, the largest concern, right, is Russia's planned withdrawal from Kherson, which some reports indicate that Russia is still moving large amounts of forces out of the region. Um, and they are attempting to dig in, probably to fight a delaying action on the outskirts of Kherson. So I really think that the larger tactical situation is unchanged and that these don't indicate Russia going on some sort of larger pressing offensive, probably more something like targets of opportunity, catching uh, Ukrainian forces while they're repositioning, or just sort of the push and pull that happens when you have irregular forces like TDF and newly more mobilized troops uh, sparring for control of regions that there's not significant tactical risk. But that's not the real story. That's not what you guys clicked on this for. You clicked to hear about this. And when we're, of course, turning to ground news, we which in the era of misinformation and disinformation and bias is pretty essential, especially when you have a story that sounds like it could be made up. But when we look at who's reporting it, and we realize that it's a lot of center-leading sources, The Guardian, Hindu Times, ABC News, AP, right, Al Jazeera. These are like VOA, legitimate, legitimate, The Daily Caller, all very legitimate news sources, which says to us that this might actually be true. What's the gist of the story? Afghan commandos who fought alongside U.S. troops are being recruited by the Russian military. They say the Russians want to attract thousands of the former elite commandos into a foreign legion. Uh, they're supposedly talking through WhatsApp with about 400 other commandos, and the recruitment comes as Russian forces, of course, are struggling against Ukrainian advances. Uh, this is... Uh, just sort of unfortunate on a lot of levels. Also, guys, if you want to try Ground News for free, I have a special link in the description. Um, just give it a click. They're a huge sport sponsor of the channel, and they are, I mean, we're going to see all the value they bring right now. So you can see, interesting, the South China Morning Post, which is actually a uh, considered a mouthpiece for uh chinese sort of the chinese government of the pro-chinese stance right you can see here that these commandos are being offered fifteen hundred dollars a month uh and a promise of safe havens you have to remember during the withdrawal from uh uh afghanistan u.s troops utterly failed um to have an orderly withdrawal at all they had no visa program and uh, for many Afghan security forces, right, they were, I'm trying to think of a nice way of putting it, uh, they were a mixed bag. Some of them were very good, and some of them were very poor. 
But the Afghan commandos were the best of the best. They often were very proficient in uh, English. They were extremely committed uh, and they were trained by Green Berets, Navy SEALs, British SAS. Um, these guys were top, top tier. And there was twenty to 30,000 of them that fought over the course of the 20-year war. So again, these are 20,000 battle-hardened, trained by first-rate troops, um, soldiers. They're not like the ones that you sometimes see in videos with unable to you know, do a jumping jack or whatever. Um, these guys have realized that since the Taliban have taken over their home country, they are living like exiles and refugees, mostly it seems like in Iran, but they aren't sure what to do. But a $1,500 a month salary uh, sounds tremendous if you have family living in you know, the Iranian Afghan border. Um, of course, the recruiting is being led by Wagner Group, who seems to very much be proficient at recruiting from all sorts of different sources. Uh, but there's some sort of uh, Afghan Special Forces commander who lived in Russia and speaks the language, probably an Afghan war vet. But this is really one of the big problems, and they interviewed a, a CIA officer who says, hey, these guys were, were spent decades, sometimes their whole adult lives, serving the United States and the Afghan government we supported, and we never bothered to get them out, even though they were, even regardless of whether or not you personally like them, these Afghan commandos are, well, what we're seeing now, extremely well-trained, extremely disciplined, extremely proficient in really, really advanced tactics. And as units, they're going to be battlefield ready, like very battlefield ready. And so, again, the potential danger to Ukrainians, even if they have the sort of mid-level equipment, um, I can't imagine being like a you you know a, a a territorial defense force again if it's recruited by wagner group they're going to be trying to take bakhmut um i can't imagine being a tdf force right uh, you know six months ago eight months ago you were a taxi driver or a uh, an office worker and now you're going head to head with uh battle hardened afghan commandos on the other side it's a it's a bad deal it's a raw deal and you don't you would not want to be uh those ukrainians um, of course, they've talked about it. Uh, they interviewed Prigozhin, who called it crazy nonsense, which uh, is probably a sign that it's a, a, a totally spot on. Um, but you know, China just is loving this story. Uh, but as we said, when we also look at VOA, the, the mouthpiece of the American government, they say the exact same thing. Afghan special forces, right? And that's because this is really, I think, drawn from the reporting that the AP did. Um, in fact, I think these are literally line by line the same article. Uh, here's Preglosen describing it as crazy nonsense. It's probably not nonsense. And even if all you got was 400 commandos, just 400 highly trained Afghan commandos are going to be able to just crush it. Right. This one commando said he was offered Russian visas for himself as well as his three children and wife still in Afghanistan. Uh, others have been offered extensions of their Iranian visas. Um, and they are waiting to see what the other people in the WhatsApp group are going to decide before going ahead and making the deal. And I suspect that, you know, when the first group comes back and says hey this is a legitimate deal the pay really came through the 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 fighting you know is it is i don't know who would i rather be an afghan commando or a russian i'd probably rather be an afghan commando fighting in afghanistan um but if they come back and say hey the deal is legit it's we're paid what we're promised we really do get the visas i think you'll see a lot more afghan commandos and a lot more non-commando afghans get recruited into these sort of roles right they weren't since these guys were never eligible for special u.s visas um and oftentimes these 
uh, commandos were some of the hardest of the hard. They never, uh, oftentimes never surrendered to the Taliban, fought until they ran out of ammo. Anyway, guys, that is all I had for you for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Of course, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot. Also, of course, if you want access to uncensored combat video breakdowns, the kind I'm not allowed to show you on YouTube, you want to become a member of the Patreon. Thanks to all my Lieutenant Tier patrons. Um, and there's even more I've got to add this week. I'll see you all in the next one.